What is good guys? Sir Charles the Poet here. Welcome to this week's video. So this week's video, I wanted to, as you guys know, I, I, as you may know, I was, I worked at, at in Montana with the Yellowstone Club. And it was the season drop for the winter season that this winter season finished. And so, yeah, so the job ended. So now I want to make a review video, talk about what I like and what, what I love and what I hated about the job. Cool? Cool. Let's get right into it. All right. Right off the bat. First thing. So I'm going to start with the things that I hate first. <laughs> Let's start with the thing. I'm going to give you a list of the things that I hate is, and then I'll get to the things that I love about it. Okay, cool. Right off the bat. First thing that I hate. Oh my God. That I hated about this job. Where I live is a one hour drive from where I work. There is this quote that I go by. The quote says, if your, if your commute to work takes up more than one hour in your paycheck, one hour or more in your paycheck, then that job is not worth it. Now, this job, it was one hour. I mean, if you, if you drive fast, you can get like to, four, to like 55 minutes, it was one hour. So, so I hate that, I hate that. I hate that. I haven't sit in the car for like a, a shuttle bus for one hour. And the and the worst part about the commute is that well, there are some nice ones. The worst part about the commute is that um is that for half an hour of the commute, we would have to drive through some mountains for half for thirty minutes of the, in the commute. There is no signal at all, no phone signal, no Wi Fi, no nothing. You just gotta sit there for the half hour. Talk to your coworkers. <laughs> Stare out the window. <laughs> Meditate. Read a book. <laughs> Listen to music. Sleep. <laughs> so yeah. So, but 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 during that half hour when there was no, we was we were driving between some mountains. The scenery is beautiful. The mountains are nice to look at. I mean, it gets boring after a while, but it's nice to look at. But the most the most beautiful thing about it is the animals. I've seen elks. I've seen reindeers. It's just tears. I've seen bisons just just driving through through that road, um, and seeing elks are majestic creatures. The way they just stand on the rock, it's 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 incredible. The second that I hate the most about the job is the communication between the employees and the and the and the management staff. Yo, the communication is terrible. Wow, it's terrible. Like, when is the staff party? What is the last day of employment? In my interview uh, for the job, I was told my my the last day is a seasonal job. It's a seasonal job, so there's a there's a preset last day. The last day is a certain date. Boom, wrote that down. No, that's the last day. But when I got into the job, I've asked some people, and some have confirmed that this is the last day, but others. We're saying it's a different date. Others are saying they were told a different date in their in their in their um in their interview. And other people were also telling me that, especially the one of the returners, were telling me that um no, we've there's always been a, a certain date for the last day, and and it's not what you were told. So I was like, what in the world? And then I kid you, I kid you, I kid you not. Two weeks, two weeks before the last day of employment. That's after I that already booked my 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 flight because I was going off of the date that I was told in the interview. Two weeks before I booked my employment, before I booked my my flight, I received an email saying, "This is this is when the last day the last day of of employment is, and this is the, when the staff party is." And guess what? Guess what? The last day of employment is after my flight. And I signed a paper that says, like for housing, I signed a paper that says that if I leave before my last year of employment, I will not get the security deposit back. Speaking of which, I still have not received my security deposit. They said that I was gonna get it. Oh my God, I have to email them. I still haven't received my security deposit. They said that I was supposed to get it a month after, um, after like about a month after I, I leave the job. 
it's it's been April. Is it is it is currently June. I left the job in April. It, it's basically two months since I left the job. Well, one and a half. Yeah, I have to email. Oh my god, I have to email. Hi guys. So um, as you can hear, there's a lot, there's a lot of noise in the background. I can't escape that. I moved to a new room. That new room is 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 closer to the factory. Nice room, but location is terrible. Anyways, I'm so as I'm editing the video, I just want to tell you guys that I did email them and got in touch with them, and it turned out I didn't receive my security deposit. What they had done is that they in my final paycheck, you know the final paycheck you get when you leave a job, um, with the one that's like two cents, this two cents paycheck, in that final paycheck, they had put the security deposit. As a part, they put the security deposit in that paycheck in one in one payment. Therefore, I got the paycheck. I was like, okay, it's pretty small. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really take much of it because I just knew, I, well, I just knew it's my last paycheck is going to be pretty small. So, and of course, again, communication. That did, that did not tell me that is the manner in we in which I was going to receive um the security deposit. I didn't tell me anything about how I'm going to receive the security deposit. I assumed that since I had um direct deposit they will they will they will send it that way, which of course they did. But um but I thought it would be like a a, a security deposit payment by itself, not come back with the paycheck. But it's alright. They did send the money and, and I did receive it. So I just wanna say like clear that out. Um, <laughs> communication is still terrible, but it did do that part, and I wanna and I wanna be honest and let you guys know about that. And to go back on communication, another thing about on, another thing that happened in experience that I had in, in housing, and that's that's employee housing, is they tried to take my money. They tried to take my money, bro. They tried to take my money, yo. If you know me, you know one thing about me. I do not. I do. I do not. I do not mess with my money, bro. Don't mess with my money. Uh uh. uh don't touch my money. Don't mess with my money. They try to take my money. So, quick story. Buckle in. Um, get your popcorn. We're gonna gonna tell a story. I'm gonna tell you how how it happened. So, I did when I started working. I didn't start working in the beginning of the season. As a matter of fact, I started working, well, I started working halfway through the season, through the winter season, but that's not important. What's important is that I started working two months after I was offered the job. Two months. They made a special, they made a special accommodation for me because I had some special circumstances, and they said, okay, you can come in two months later. Cool. So, after I got, immediately after I got hired, I also registered for housing. Although I, I did not live there because I didn't start for until two months, I was registered into housing. So after I registered, after I registered into housing, I received a, when it was time for, for to pay my rent, my housing rent, I received an email saying your rent is due. When that first happened, I was shocked and I emailed them immediately and said, what do you mean my rent is due? I'm not even living there yet. I'm not even living there yet. So they emailed me back and said, I apologize. It's because you're registered in the system, but just to ignore the email. Cool. So and and, and 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 fair enough, I checked the email, I like opened the link there to pay the rent to just to, just out of curiosity, and it did say I owe zero dollars. Cool, awesome. So as they told me, I just like kept on ignoring the emails. Like I was under the, the impression that when I I will receive I will start paying rent after I moved not just after I moved in, but like after I moved in, and when I received the first, when I received the first rent bill, I I think I in my head it was like my first rent bill is gonna be like a slightly bigger than the than the rest of my rent bills because because it's it's they that you pay in advance. It's also something like for the few days that I was there. Anyways, but yeah, so I was I kept ignoring emails as they told me to do. Rent is paid in a two week cycle, so every two weeks you get paid. And your rent is due on the same day. So every two weeks, rent is due. Cool. So when I moved into the into housing, when I moved into housing, so that's week one. That's week two. When I moved into housing, it was in the middle of the rent cycle. So after week one. Now, now, 
when I had received when when in the beginning of week one I had received the email for rent, as I was in the in the habit of doing ignoring these emails because I'm not living there anymore, I just ignored that email because I was not living there anymore. As it told me to do. Now, when I moved in after week one, I moved into housing and checked in. Apparently, automatically your rent started occurring. And and not just rent started occurring, but I was supposed to pay rent the day I moved in because it was in the middle of a rent cycle. And and so so the, you you pay two weeks in advance. Therefore, since like the first week I was not there, the since I moved in after the first week, that means I have to pay for that one week for that for the remaining days in the rent cycle. I have to pay for it in advance on my first day there. I did not know that. It makes sense when they explain it to me, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, when I received my first rent, so after one week of living there, when I received my first rent, that rent was that 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 rent was thick. It, it was it was thick with five C's. It was thick. That rent was thick. So I was like, okay, that's bizarre. I mean, the thing is. It was I was it was my negligence that I actually didn't know how much how much rent how much is rent in the first place because um so that was me being negligent but the rent was big I assume that I I'm, I'm used to like big rent large rent high my high rent and like living in New York City so I was like okay whatever cool I paid it I paid it right cool I paid it second cycle of rent came. The rent, that rent was also high, but it was a different number. So I was like, okay, like a red flags, but I was like, okay, I, I paid it all, all the way off. And then the third cycle came and my rent was $100. Not only was it different from the other, the two previous cycles, but it was also lower than the two previous cycles. So I was like, wait, the system's messed up. <laughs> What's going on? Why am I getting charged differently each time for rent? Is there like certain fee that is applying, like that's going on? So first of all, I, I, I asked around with my with my um with my fellow coworkers or other housing mates who 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 were living in my in the in the in the um housing area. And they my with my fellow housing mates. I asked around and apparently Every, a lot of not everyone, a lot of people have been getting weird numbers for their rent. They said that they just had to go to go to the um go to the housing department and had them either give them back the money or 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 avoid a, a rent payment or something. Like have them fix it. So I was like, oh, what the hell? And granted, like so now I know there's actually a problem going on. But I have ne I never received an email from a housing department about this problem. Never received it. But I emailed them and then they and then one of them one of the people in housing, one of the management managers in housing asked me to um I have a meeting in person that will explain to me. So when I had the meeting with them in person, that the the housing um, officer or whatever person explained to me why my first rent was so high. They said that as you know, as we said, you pay rent two weeks in advance. So when you had received that notification, that notification, although you were in the habit of ignoring rent, of ignoring of ignoring those notifications, since you had moved in within that pay period, that pay period, that means as soon as you had checked in into housing, it would have, it would like you were you were um due, you were due the rest of the days in the two week cycle. You had to pay the rest of the days in the two week cycle. And which means, which means, that, and there's a late fee as well. So, so that means each day that passed that I did not pay that rent, a late fee was occurring on it. And I was like, motherfuckers, <laughs> that's smart. They they got me. They they got me good. That's smart. Wow. I was like, wow, y'all got me good. First of all, they're the one who they're the one who I mean I told you, you guys are the one who told me to ignore the, the email. She said yes, it, it's safe to ignore the email because you were not living there. But since you started living there, you are you are um you are you are responsible for, for, for the rent because you officially moved in. No 
nobody told me that. That I had to pay a rent the day I moved in. Like, and I just could not argue with, argue with her because, I, because the, their trick is good. They got me good with their trick. It's, it's a messed up trick, but they got me good. Like, at least tell your, tell your, um, your, the, 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 the residents to make sure you check, like, the day you move in, you have to, you have to pay your rent for the rest of the, of the days in the, in the, in the, in the rent cycle. But they didn't. And they didn't have to, because technically, technically, I'm within a two-week cycle, so I'm, I'm sure be ch checking that I pay for all the days that I lived in there. And I explained to her that I thought I was going to be charged my next bill. She said, mm-mm. I was like, I was, I was, I was mad, but I was also impressed at how good the trick was. Cool, cool, that. And then, but I paid the whole charge my first rent cycle, which means the second cycle I should not have gotten anything. And I, I and I and I and so I so I brought up the second rent cycle to her, and she said, "Oh, actually, that we we had a we had a problem in our system, and we overcharged you." So she refunded me the amount that overcharged me. Cool. Cool, but there was a big problem in their system that everybody had had that affected everybody, but they did not tell anyone about that problem. Had I not asked my like, had I not asked my my um my housemates about like what the their what what their rent amount is, I would have never realized that I was getting charged extra. They never said anything. And they knew there was a problem going, they knew people were getting charged extra. They didn't say it, sent an email, they didn't say anything. That's sketchy. That's messed up. That's that's wrong. That's evil. Okay? And if they're watching this video, that's evil. Y'all should not be doing that. Hmm. And then, and then, the and then it turned, and, and it, so yeah, so yeah I, I, yeah, I paid that, like, the whole amount, so she refunded me that amount, the uh, the extra that I paid, fine. And turns out, the third time when I got paid the $100, the $100 is actually what I'm supposed to get paid. I mean, the hundred when I got charged $100, the $100 is actually what I'm supposed to get charged. So that <laughs> was the correct amount of rent. So every day, every rent cycle sends in, I made sure it was 100 and um yeah so that that so one thing one other thing that i hate their communication and their sketchiness this this is my the last thing that i that, that i that i hated about the or that i didn't like about, about the job it's not it's not it's not such a bad thing but i wish it was different though i wish it were different and it, it's more about about the about management, the, the, actual, the actual workplace. I didn't get trained for the job. I did not properly train. On my first day, my training was this guy, um, my, my manager, my direct, my direct manager, he gave me a packet. He said, you have to read this packet and, and, um, and, um, and know everything in it. That's the housekeeping instructions, everything in the packet. And then, and then he took me to a house and he and he sh he showed me these things that he got. You make sure you check above the above the paintings. Make sure you you check above stuff, below stuff. If you clean this, clean that, blah blah blah. And that's it. I wasn't really shown like I wasn't really shown that this spray is for this, this spray is for that. You clean this this way. This is why this type of cleaning is. I was never really shown like shown that. And the more and when I started the job, and so he basically he so he basically told me that, and he said that. But your real training is you you're gonna learn the field. You just work with your with your coworkers, and your coworkers have to teach you how to teach you the job. And the more and the, as soon as I started working, my coworkers were like, "No, we got properly trained. We had we had a training session. You were supposed to get one yourself." Now I understand that I came like a few months late, so maybe I'm it's not maybe I, so I definitely missed the training session. But I feel like they, I feel like since they agreed to like let me start a few months late, they should have had a special program for me. The fact that I did not get trained started a lot of problems between me and my coworkers. Them complaining that I was not too good at my job, I was not good enough at my job, that I was holding them back, that I was slow, that I didn't clean properly. And me, I'm like, I don't fucking know how to do the job.
I was not trained. It is your job to train me. Therefore, like while you're here, while you're here spending time complaining and saying that I, I don't know how to clean, you could have spent that same time just teaching me how to do it, and that's how I'd be better. So it created like it, it was like it was a big it was a big problem like among 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 the employees. It was a big problem. Let's talk about the things that I love about the job. The things that I love, 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 love about the job. Let's get into it. <laughs> so the first thing that I, that I love the most about the job, and I have to give it to them, is the managers are super nice. They are nice, friendly, and understanding. And I mean, of course, there is, there is, there is, it's management. So there's going to be problems with management. Like, they didn't train me properly. But like, aside from that, they're super nice. Like, I can talk to them, have, come, have conversations with them. And they, and they, um, they, um, like, if there's conflict, they step in between the conflict to try to, to try to manage it. If I have a, re a special request, they try to accommodate me. They're very, they're very, um, communic they, I can talk to them. I like that. They're like we're friends, we're buddies. Uh, well, we're not buddies, but like, we're like we're we're friends. They try to show that um they are like like they can work. They try to work with us. They try to meet us where we're at and work with us. I I love that about management, I, especially my manager. He was amazing. Like God bless this guy. He was amazing. I, I won't say any names, but he was amazing. Yes, definitely. So that's my favorite thing about the job. And the second thing is the peep, the coworkers. The co I love. I mean, we had some. I had some conflicts with some. I had some conflict with, with some coworkers, but I love them. Like nonetheless, I love my co the coworkers. And one of the main reasons why is because is because they're from all over. For the season that was there, it was mainly um Hispanic, so from different from various like um Spanish Spanish speaking countries in Latin America. And um and it was so Hispanics and Jamaicans. So Hispanics and Jamaicans. That that was the the there was like three domestic people. <laughs> and I was one of them. <laughs> um but yes, yeah, so so talking to these people and and hearing their hearing them out, hearing their stories, hearing them talk to each other, is like it's like taking an international trip without even leaving your city. I learned the the wealth of knowledge that I learned. My Spanish got so 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 good. My Spanish got so good, which is great. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that about about the job, and definitely, yeah, I definitely love that. Um, and, and that's a and that's a common thing with seasonal job too, seasonal work too. Lots of employ, lots of international um employees. So you get to have that interaction with the, with the international population. Next thing that I love about, about the job, next thing that I love about working at Big Sky, yo, these houses, these houses, oh my God. These houses are incredible. Like, I won't, I won't name, I won't say in, in this, um, the type of, like I, some houses that I went into, I knew, like, they're owned by famous people. Famous rich people, or like if they're not rich, if they're not fit, if they're not famous, then they're rich. Famous rich people, that um, this there that these are the, the houses that I was cleaning. Yo, these houses are incredible. I was just there like, the whole time manifesting OD to get a, to get one of these houses. I was manifesting OD, baby. I got God. I need a house like that. God, I need a house like that. God, oh, I just give me, give me the 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 right amount of money to be able to get a house like that, and I just choose not. To. These houses are beautiful. They're so beautiful, and and one thing is that it changed something inside of me. For example, you ask somebody they want to be rich. Okay, what 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 what, 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 what you you're rich. So what? Okay, what what is being rich like to you? What what is that like to you? Oh, I want a nice car, a nice house. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I want. I want. Don't want to have to worry about money. Cool. Nice house. What's a what does a nice house look? What does a nice nice house look like? Big house, multiple floors. Okay, yes. Yeah. What's inside it? What does it look like? And then when somebody asks you that question, you're kind of stuck, right? What What does a nice house look like? I don't know, cause I've never been in one. Seeing these houses, like when I say faith, when when I say faith, um. For faith to work, you have to see the vision and, and, and have faith that it will happen. 
the thing what the, the 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 limitation with that is is it's hard to have faith it hard, it's hard to see that thing and strive for it if you've never seen it before how can you how can you strive for a beautiful house if you've never seen a beautiful house before if you spend your whole life in in in, in poor and in, in impoverished communities and with small houses and apartment buildings seeing these houses change something inside of me it's telling me that wow i'm so close it's telling me it's right there. Just get it, and I can get it. And it, it, it kind of, it, it, I was, I was watching this video on this Steve Harvey video, and he said that um, you should, next time you're booking a, a flight somewhere, you should fly first class. Even if you that, if you don't have the money, if it's not, it's outside your budget. Um, get together all the little change that you have and buy a first class ticket. And then he said, after you fly that first, after you fly, you fly first class. After that, your brain, your brain is gonna be rewired. So now you're gonna aim to live a life or live a life that leads to, that allows you live life that allows you to just to only book first first class flights. And it was just like that. Seeing these houses, clean these houses, my brain got rewired to live a life, to aim to have a house just like that. Or be able to afford a house just like that. And the last thing, the last thing, which is also one of the best things that I love about this job, the pay. That pay is so good. I was, I nearly was getting paid the same as my full-time job. Like full-time job back in New York City, my full-time nine to five. I was getting, I was getting paid nearly the same amount. I mean, I was gonna pay. Uh, no, I was gonna pay nearly the same amount. And when you, when you, when you remove the fact that I don't have to buy groceries or pay for, or pay that much for for housing, like one hundred dollars every two weeks for housing, that's like two hundred dollars a month for housing. What? I was making bank. Oh my god! So the pay is good. The pay is good. And I see why why a lot of people, I'm like especially international folks, want to come and work that job. And yeah, want to want to work that job. The pay is good, and and when you convert that to their currency, which is in their country, which is which will will multiply the the, the earnings. Yeah, the pay was good. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the end of the video. So thank you for sending through this whole this video. It's um, I'm gonna edit it. this video is probably long, 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 long. <laughs> But yeah, that was my that was my experience and and working for, working for the Yellowstone Club in Big Sky, Montana. Um, I was doing a housekeeping position there in, in Big Sky. I was a housekeeper, and that's my that's that's why I love and what I hated about about working that position. Okay.